Welcome, welcome to, uh, to AOL Build. I like that I'm the resident Olympian. I, li I like that title. Uh, we're going to have some fun today. She's an Olympic champ. This guy, Keena, right here, he trains Michael Phelps. So we're going to have some very interesting conversations with the two of them. I, I want to say before we get started, I'm so happy for the Olympics because there's so much divisiveness now with politics. It's so good. I don't think it was planned, but to have the Olympics, actually something everyone in the country can agree and root for is, uh, it, I think it's huge. I think Rio is going to be really a really important Olympics for us, and we can be one country and cheer for you guys. So um, I just want to start with that. But uh, we are announcing something very cool, chocolate milk uh, sponsorship here. Do you guys, so I love chocolate milk, um, and I'm an Olympian, <laughs> but when I was drinking chocolate milk, I felt bad that I was, like, doing something wrong. Oh. So you're here to tell me. I was actually, this was like part of my success. Yes, I am. Um, surprise, it's yes. like the best recovery drink ever. There's a bunch of new science out, which Keenan knows all about. He's a genius about it. But um, it has the perfect carb to protein ratio, and it actually replaces the glycogen that you lose in practice, like so that the sugars are actually good for you um, after a tough workout. I'm training for the Olympics yeah. right now, everyone. <laughs> and um, I mean, it tastes good, so that's the most important. <laughs> so how, how, where and when does one drink the chocolate milk to maximize the, uh, the training here? Well, I think, um, I think like, like you answered it, you want to drink it as much as you can. As an athlete that's, that's perpetually training, um, it provides so many great um, nutrients to the body, but we'll touch on three that are, that are really important. And number one is, is the carbohydrate. Um, it's a three-to-one carbohydrate to protein ratio. And so what, what, what carbohydrates provide is glycogen, which is the body's, the body's gas system. So as athletes, Olympic athletes, um, more times than not, they're, they're running on a, a nutrient deprivation instead of a nutrient surplus. So um, getting that gas into your system so that not only is your practice, your current practice efficient, but the subsequent practices or competitions are efficient. And then the protein... Um, everybody knows what protein is. It, it just helps with uh, uh, muscle regeneration. So the breakdown, whether you're fencing, like th this, sorry, I don't mean to be. It's all good. Go ahead. Or, or swimming. You're swimming. Like, yeah, exactly. I can make you're, fun of you too. You're, you're helping rebuild the muscle. Um, and as the, um, the dynamics or the ge geographics of the sport of swimming in particular have changed where we have more grown women and more grown men in our sport, the breakdown of protein has become a greater, greater point of emphasis. And then the third one, is, which is kind of like the, the hidden ingredient, is the source of vitamin D. And one of the things that we found over the past probably five years of taking blood from swimmers is even the ones that train out, outdoors, which is where the greatest source of vitamin D comes from, they're still running a deficiency at that. So if we can get that into their body, what a, what a great advantage the athletes have. So I also like chocolate chip cookies. Does that also help me to train, or is it just the milk? Stay tuned chocolate? for the science. I'm, I'm, on Cookie Monster <laughs> I'm right looking now. for the chocolate milk for the uh, the chocolate chip cookie sponsorship. Excuse me. Um, so Jessica, let me ask you. Every Olympic sport has a, a different Olympic qualification process. Where is Team USA swimming athletes? Where are you guys right now in the process for Rio? We don't get selected until July 3rd is the last day of our Olympic trials. So it's really last minute before the Olympic Games. Um, we're in like the heavy bulk of our aerobic training. I would say most of us are pretty beat up right now. Definitely. By this guy, correct? Yeah. Because he's a, your strength like conditioning maybe. coach. Yeah, it's definitely like a lot of hard work. And um, trying to just keep our eye on the goal and, and fingers crossed for the summer. But right now it's just working, staring at that black line. You already have in your mind like what events you're going for, correct? Because what are, what are your events that you're going to try to qualify for in Rio? I swim, breaststroke, and sprint freestyle. So whatever I make it in. Whatever you make it in. <laughs> well, hopefully fun. both. Hopefully both. <laughs> you got to do it. Um, and let me ask you a little bit. You won the gold medal in London. How satisfying was that experience, especially coming off of everything that you kind of went through with, with the Beijing Olympics? And yeah, I mean, I mean, even since I was a little girl, you, I've dreamt of being – and going to the Olympics, being an Olympic gold medalist, it's literally a dream come true. It sounds cliche, and um, obviously you can just dream about it. But actually going through it, it was just crazy. It's it's um, obviously the culmination of a lot of hard work, and and it you know brings up a lot of memories of the hard work and like the journey that I've been on. It made everything worth it, and um, definitely the happiest moment of my life, and kind of an addicting feeling. So. And you have a book more. as well that talks a lot about it. What's the book called if people want to check a little more about your story? My book is called Swimming Toward the Gold Lining, How Jessica Hardy Turned Her Wounds into Wisdom. 
um, kind of, you know, a little bit of self-helpy vibe and a lot of the lessons I've learned along the way. And if you don't mind me delving a little bit in, in Beijing, and this actually happened in fencing as well, you had a drug test that was, she was unable to compete because of the drug test. On, so in fencing, basically, we had a number one fencer in the world, competed, qualified, did all the hard tournaments, passed all his tests, and then had a, just a weird one that failed based on a substance he had never heard of either. Um, where are you now? Like, how do you, when you reflect back on that now, like, is it still upsetting to you? Is it you've moved past because of London? Or, or how do you feel having gone through that? Obviously heartbreaking to miss the Beijing Olympic Games. Um, but, you know, I relied a lot on kind of the facts. I, I proved my innocence um, and have swum faster since then than I ever did before. Broke nine world records since that happened. And um, definitely more appreciative of everything I've gotten to do and, and you know, more grateful and more motivated. You know, it lit a fire up underneath me and kicked butt in London and, and enjoying the journey. And your so. husband was an Olympic swimmer as well? Yes. And you guys were, did you guys compete together in London? Uh, yeah, we did. What was that experience yeah. like going through that with your spouse? But he's for another country, right? So did yes. you, how, did you, were you able to root for him or, or what did you have to do when he was going against our athletes? Yeah, I like DL cheered him. <laughs> he races Michael, so, <laughs> so he doesn't win, but, <laughs> but um, no, it's fun. We, we met at a world championships. He represents Switzerland and he's been to three Olympic games. Um, and he, we got to compete in London together and like see each other on deck and hug and you know people got pictures of us and stuff that you know we'll frame in our house and I mean absolutely the coolest memories. But he had already been to two, so he showed me the ropes and you know made me feel a little bit more comfortable in the village. And you guys are both married to swimmers. So <laughs> what should people know if they want to date a swimmer? Are you like a special breed? Like does it help that you guys are Good married question. to each other or what, what do <laughs> we need to, to know for, for people out there? Um, we eat a lot and we sleep a lot. You eat a lot and you sleep a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, we work hard and we have to sacrifice a lot, you know, of our social life. So, you know, it, it takes a special person to appreciate kind of the hermit crab lifestyle that we have to live a little bit. Nice, nice. And Kino, I want to ask you, so you, you're the guy that trains Michael Phelps. Uh, how, how, when did you start working with him? How did that come about? Uh, I started working with him after the 2004 Olympic Games, and it was just pure fate and circumstance. Uh, my first job out of grad school was at the University of Michigan, which so happened to be Michael's first year at the University of Michigan. I had no swimming background, um, so kind of just two paths um, crossed. Uh, and, uh, you know, I immediately um, met a great group of swimmers that were there at the time. We had a great collection of, of, of swimmers, um, I think someone did the numbers one time, but I think between the, the 2008 and the 2012 Olympic Games, a group that swam there you know, produced over like 30 Olympic medals. Um, but one thing I noticed is that they were a completely underserved population. You know, take something like nutrition, and they were just going to these competitions and just blindly walking in and, and uh, you know, just going off of what they read or what their parents told them. And so... Um, to be able to provide something with a population as great as, as I mean, this is, swimming produces the majority of all the medals by, by U.S. sports teams. Um, so to be able to give something back to athletes that were so underserved is really, um, a, really a really good benefit of me. What does a typical swimmer, swimmer's strength and conditioning look like? Like how, mu how often are they in the pool? How often are, um, how often are you or they uh, working out? So by the time they get to, to Jessica's level, it, it's all individual based um, because uh, through wear and tear over their careers, um, they got weaknesses or they've got some, some bangs and bruises. So, um, and they, they've achieved the most important thing, which, which is sport mastery. What they can do is in a less than one percentile of the world within their sport. So we're just looking for something to tweak or improve or enhance. Um, so. To, to tell you one specific thing would be difficult for me to do and, and uh, a disservice to what Jess and other swimmers of her level do. So what does your week look like then? A week? Yeah. What does your workout, what's, what's like your typical workout week look like? I definitely am a big advocate or fan of cross training. We call it dry land exercise because we're, the other exercise we have alternative is in the pool. So it's kind of, kind of silly, but um, I do, I lift weights three times a week. I do Pilates twice a week, yoga once a week. Um, in the off season, I'll run and cycle. I box, do it all. Have you fenced yet? No, I'm we got to get you fencing. That's a dry land I'm one. Afraid. We can get you doing. It's very, if you box, fencing is very safe in comparison. You have to teach. And me. how many? Of course, of course. How, how many hours a day do you actually train on a typical day? 
Um, training total time is five to six hours a day. Um, I don't do as much water swimming as like Michael or another swimmer does. I'm a sprinter and I'm older, so I've cut that back and increased my outside of the pool work, but um, definitely it's a full-time commitment, full-time job. Did you take today off or have you worked out today also? Or are you going to work uh, out today? <laughs> actually, today is off, but I'm making up for it. On you got to make her work out. Well, we are going to make her work out actually. Because um, we were talking back and I was like, what are some exercises people can do? Um, and so, uh, I thought it would be fun for you to show us uh, maybe a couple exercises that uh, people at home can do if they want to train like a swimmer. All right. So, <laughs> what do you got for do you want? Do you want to show? Uh, can you show us that exercise we're doing out back? Yeah, absolutely. Tell me we're going to come on here and make them work out for us. <laughs> and we're going to make the audience do this too. So grab a friend. I'm sure, like I'm sure, like everybody else, when these. Uh, Women and men walk onto the deck, and you guys see them. They just have, like, abs of Greek gods and goddesses, right? So it's one thing to look good, but the other thing is to be able to perform good. And so one of the things that we always talk about is being able to connect from their toes to their fingertips. And so um, trying to find something that replicates the six-pack that she has, but she's able to use it to benefit in her sport. So we're kind of going to do something that really engages her spine, but um, replicates what she's going to be doing in the water, so some connection. Are you ready? I'm ready. Bring All right, here we go, here we go. Here we go. So if you look, Jess is pressing and pulling up. So you look at this, the line from her earlobes to her shoulders to her hips down to her knees, and it's almost a perfect straight line. So it's important because, number one, you know that she's going in the straight line, which is important in the sport of swimming, but you know that her spine, all her lumbar disc, her lower back, they're in a protective manner, and you can tell she's starting to get a little tired. <laughs> But we've done a good <laughs> She's giving a round of applause for that. That's amazing. So, and that's a, that's a swimming-specific exercise. I, just, I mean, go ahead. If you do that, and, you know, if you do that at home, you can master something like that. You're going to have a healthy back. Uh, you'll feel good. Your shoulders will be very good. So all of us that sit in front of a desk all day, you'll have a good, strong uh, posture. So, yeah, get, get off there. Do you do that one with Michael? Uh, yes, I do, because he does swim all four strokes, so. I, I, I will give it a whirl. You have to hold the mic so everyone can hear us at home. Okay. He's going to do it, guys. This is exciting. This is exciting. Tim's actually going to take it to another level because he is. I'm not taking it to another level. <laughs> We're taking it another level down, maybe. All right. Just so you guys can see how hard this is. This is a out-of-shape fencer doing a swim exercise. All right. All right. So go ahead. Like flex here so you're tight. Squeeze here. Okay. I do not have a six-pack like Adonis, by the way. Not yet. Not yet. Just look at me there. Lean forward, lean forward. Pull up, pull up, pull up, squeeze, 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 squeeze. Okay, pull up, pull up, pull up. Oh. Come on, head back, head back, head back, head back. Oh, oh, wow, yeah. That was great. That was three. All right, thank you. Thank you. So uh, is that something people can do at home? Like, is that a good cross-training for, for other people, or is that just a... Professional. I, I would say that's a good that's a good ending destination. Um, you know, we're all so, so familiar through social media and, and uh, you know magazines that the, the planks and plank variations are, are important for spinal stability. So I think you know once you start there. But let's say you've been doing that for since your New Year's resolution, and we're now moving into March, and you're saying, man, I want to I want to make I want to take this up an extra an extra level. That may be something that you can go ahead and try, or maybe start rolling out on a physio ball or, or using an ab wheel. But uh, so that's kind of an end game. That was really tough, by the way. I just did three, and I'm sweating and tired. So, all right, that was good. Any other exercise for people who are people are going to watch the Olympics? They're going to get pumped up. They're going to want to work out. What are the best exercises for people to do if they want to feel Olympic? <laughs> get in the water and, and just just swim around. Not only is it going to make you um, envision that you are an Olympian, but uh, as we know, like uh, swimming is, is uh, pools are, are one of the leading causes of, of deaths, especially in adolescence. So if you as an adult are getting in the water, it'll be good to kind of bring your kids in as well. So just kind of get in, get some vitamin D, soak up the rays, work on your tan. Yeah, and, and it almost stretches you out. It's like a place for me to go and meditate too. So I feel like I've done a combination of yoga and cardio all in the same workout and the best. I'm biased, but I, it's the best. <laughs> I have a really odd specific question for you. I've seen a lot of articles about athletes, including Michael, sleeping in hyperbaric chambers. Is that a thing now? Do we do that? Do you do that? I do. I do. 
Yeah. At home, you have like one at home in your like, no. Your I bed? go. I go okay. to a, a, a doctor's office and not take a nap every day, every other day. Yeah. It. it um, so one of the things that you know our, our USA Swimming's headquarters is uh, in Colorado Springs, which is at altitude. And one of the things over the years that we found by by taking M Michael's blood draws is that he responds well. So the th reason why you, you sleep in one of those changers is is to increase your your red blood cell count, which is your oxygen carrying capacity. So. The more you have, the better your oxygen carrying capacity and the better your chance of uh, swimming at a high performance over the three races. So Jess in the 100 breaststroke will have the prelims, the semis, and the finals. And we want her faster in the finals than she was in prelims and semis. Wow. It's one of the better. I just remember when I was a kid, everyone used to make fun of Michael Jackson sleeping in a hyperbaric chamber, and now our Olympic team is all doing that. <laughs> um, but where... Let's not compare Jessica to Michael Yeah, no, we're not, we're not, we're not. I'm just making a childhood <laughs> reference here. Um, but uh, how has sport science changed even since you started working with the athletes in 2004? Like, how much more science is occurring in, in regards to how the athletes are training? Have you seen improvements in how athletes are training over the last, you know, quadru couple quadrennials? I mean, 100%. I remember when I first started, um, the two services that, that were provided to, to swimmers, you remember that was, um, I don't even think they did race analysis with the underwater cameras no. yet. Not that back in 2004, I started, but it was giving you a, a power bar. So the thought and the intent was smart because glycogen depleted and they would be taking blood lactate. But um, the, the variety of, of monitoring systems that have become made pretty, pretty public because a lot of the NFL teams are doing it. Um, the football or soccer programs across the seas are doing it. But I think definitely um, the more you can see, because the body doesn't lie. So the more that you can kind of see into the body and how it's responding from a central nervous system, a hormonal response, an endocrine response, the better off the athlete is. Because it is a, a difference of 100s between getting on the podium and not getting on the podium or making the team and not making the team. And so um, it's, our, it's our job as, as, as sports science to give them the best opportunities to succeed and make their goals come true. So I'm going to ask you, Jessica, how is Team USA Swimming looking for Rio? Like, are we going to win the medal count again? Who should we be watching? Oh Who's our biggest challengers? <laughs> well, we have been the best team in the world, I think, for 70 years. Yeah, give it 70? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Thanks. Um, the rest of the world is definitely getting faster. It's not as easy as it used to be. Um, you know, I'm definitely keeping an eye on the rest of the world, and uh, it's going to be crazy fast. Katie Ledecky is killing it. She's an 18-year-old out of um, Maryland, I think, and um, Michael's back in good shape. I think we're killing it. I think we're ready. I think we're ready. Yeah. Nice. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> who, who are some uh, new folks maybe on the, we, have, we haven't heard their names yet, that uh, are going to be people, people to watch for Rio? There's definitely going to be some surprises. I think, um, you know, I love, I love the exciting, you know, young people that pop up at our Olympic trials, but you never know beforehand who it's going to be. So I have no idea who to tell you to look As long for. as I don't <laughs> pop up in your events, right? <laughs> <laughs> or if I, as long as I pop up a little faster. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, it's exciting, and it keeps us on our toes. Which country is sort of the, will be the biggest challenge for, for our team? Um, traditionally, Australia has been a huge swimming country. I think Brazil's going to swim pretty fast if it's a home country. They have a great swimming program. I think, you know, they're going to be lights yeah. out this summer. Yeah. You never know. It's, it's great. The sport of swimming is definitely a worldwide, you know, everyone in the world is enthusiastic about it, and that makes me happy. It's yeah. Great. And do you guys all, like, how much time do you guys actually spend together? Like, how much time are you training with the other team athletes? How often do you guys come together? We are an individual sport, I think, um, similar to fencing. It's, it's spread out all over the country. Some people train overseas. It's, it's um, not that often that we get to come together. Like once a month, we have like a pro swim meet series that we all come together and usually race against each other. Um, but when we do get the chance to have camps and stuff, it's like we are best friends and you never know that we don't train together. We're a great group of people that definitely get along really well and, and truly Do you have genuinely. a swim team like Bestie? <laughs> no. No. Um, my, I mean, my husband's a swimmer, so I yes, guess yes. he's my bestie. I was like a Team USA. Your team USA, <laughs> team USA. But. I love everybody. Definitely. I'm, I was the oldest one on our world championship team this summer, so I felt kind of like a mom, but... but How old? <laughs> You're not that old. 29. 29. She's saying she's old and slowing down. Yeah. Come on now. No, not slowing down. Yeah, not slowing down. <laughs> but you said you're, you're training. You're changing. You're training a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So. No, it's fun. Um, have you been to Rio yet? Have you seen the venue? Yes. I haven't seen the venue. I think it's still being built, um, as far as I'm aware of. 
Hopefully, it's being built. It's being built. It hopefully will be built by the time you guys get there. <laughs> yeah, but I have been to Rio and I love it. It's such a fun city. It's going to be a fun Olympics, I think, for yeah. sure. Um, well, we have some crowd questions for you. So uh, we've got right there in the back. Hey, thank you guys for being here. Um, <laughs> Anyone who asks a question has to work out also. <laughs> oh, man. All right, I'll try. Uh, so you guys were talking about a lot, a lot about physical fitness, um, including nutrition like chocolate milk. And um, I don't know if you noticed, uh, I don't know too much about it, but they kind of just debunked like this chocolate chip cookie study um, about, uh, which is about mental health and psychology, like self-esteem and feeling good, then therefore like increasing your performance. But the jury kind of is out on that. So I was wondering, since it is such an uh, individual sport, as you were talking about, what you can do to strengthen your psychological side, um, or if that's just something you're born with. I haven't heard that cookie study, and I'm really interested. I, I, in my whole life is based on chocolate chip cookies, so I need to find that study. <laughs> Definitely. I, I make a big decision um, and emphasis on being aware of my self-talk, especially right before a race and during a race, making sure I'm as positive as possible, like never letting a negative thought enter my mind, and if I do, just redirecting it. And um, yeah, I'm lucky my mom's a psychotherapist, and since I've been a little girl is, you know, talk to me like a therapist, and um, yeah, I think sports psychology is a huge untapped market in the sport of swimming specifically. I can only speak for my sport, but it definitely impacts your performance more than I think anyone has realized yet. Yeah, I remember when I was just a younger athlete, seeing the sports psychologist was sort of like had a, a stigma around it, and now almost all of our athletes, it's just like a regular part of training. And I, I do think those are skills you can develop, absolutely. As I got older, um, you know, I, I definitely, de you know, you could feel the mental game developing in your head and how you dealt with competition. All right, right there. Hello, hello. Uh, thanks for being here. Uh, I was just wondering what you eat during workout and training days, because I can only imagine the amount of calories you actually burn swimming. I mean, I can't swim, and I, I try to swim like 10 yards, and I'm just winded. I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> it's <I> tough. <laughs> um, I, most of the time, I just need to get enough food. I can't get enough food. And... In order to do to fuel my body correctly, I need to stay away from like fast food and junk food as much as possible. Um, so planning ahead and making sure I have like healthy preset meals and, and snacks available for me throughout the day. Sometimes I'm eating like six meals a day. Um, How many calories a day? I don't count my calories. No, calories. no ten. You gotta you gotta be like twelve thousand calories. We're talking about a psychology game, you know. I don't want to know. No. <laughs> I don't want to know how much I'm eating, but it's a lot. Hi, my name's Samantha. I was a swimmer in college, and I'm one of your fans, so awesome Thanks. job in the Olympics. Thanks. Um, just wondering, you spoke about being like the mom on the team and really just helping out the other swimmers, but how long do you plan on swimming for? I know Dara Torres went into her 40s when she swam in the Olympics, so just wondering how long you plan on being in the field. Um, this summer is kind of like the only thing on my radar right now. I'm 100% all in to, to do as best as I can this summer, and um, we'll see. What happens after that? But I plan on swimming forever. I just don't know how fast I'll be forever. <laughs> All right up front. Hey, guys. Uh, so I know, like, um, probably almost every athlete has, like, a superstitious thing they do before they, you know, compete. So is there anything that you do, like, to prepare yourself? Ooh, I like that question. <laughs> <laughs> I am kind of... I am kind of superstitious. Um, these are my great grandmother's earrings, and I actually wear them like I, the first time I ever wore them. My mom just gave them to me, and I broke a world record the first time. So I wear them a lot as my good luck earrings. All right, right there. Hello, guys. Good, to, good Hi. to have you guys here. Uh, which other sporting event would you are you intrigued in this uh, in doing this uh, year's Olympics? You got this. Which which event? <laughs> yeah. yeah, which yeah. After uh, after fencing. Well, yeah, that's fencing, what he meant to of course. Say. In case uh, you're not going to say fencing, just say after fencing. I think to, to isolate one event, um, you, you just can't do that because, like we opened up and talked, the, the Olympics, um, and I'm, I'm going to paraphrase what, um, what Davis Tarwater, who was a 2012 um, Olympic gold medalist on the USA team with us, said, is it's, it's the one time that the world is, is like altruistic, where... Every country, every sport discipline is pulling for, for everybody. There is no winners and losers. There is no New York Yankees. You know, everybody wants everybody to win and succeed. So I think that's, that's one of the things that, um, uh, that I look forward to is just um, amateur athletes achieving their dreams and goals and really supporting every other 
um, athlete and competitor in the, in the domain. Awesome. What he said. What he said. <laughs> well, I want to thank you guys for being on. Jessica Hardy, give a round of applause. Thanks, Going guys. for gold in Rio. Keenan yeah. Robinson getting our team in shape. They don't win gold. Because they win gold right? <laughs> All right. Thank you guys. Awesome.